Welcome back to another GeekyWatt video and today we're going to be discussing AMD's Threadripper line of CPUs. What it is we know so far, the impact it will have, is it for you, all of that kind of thing. So let's first look at the two Threadripper CPUs that were announced in greater detail a few days back by AMD. Now, uh, the first chip is the 1920X which comes in at $799 and the second CPU is the 1950X which comes in at $999. Now I know what you're thinking, Oh my god, James, that's expensive. However, these CPUs uh, are sort of going above and beyond that high-end desktop uh, processor lineup and really giving some server performance and capability to the more consumer end. You only have to look at how big this socket is for the CPU and how big the CPUs are to really understand just the scale that this uh, chipset line is really on. Now, most notably about the price tag is that that higher end CPU comes in at exactly the same price uh, as Intel's new release, the i9 chip, which also aims to target the highest end users in the market. But AMD have gone and done it again. At launch, at announcement, have given us some real true performance figures that actually stack up. They did it with Ryzen 7 and really impressed people and when people got them themselves they tested the chips and were seeing the same numbers that AMD was. AMD in their recent launch video pitched their two Threadripper CPUs against its latest Intel i9 CPU. The Intel i9 chip was seeing a score in Cinebench of around about 2100 and AMD's Threadripper releases were seeing 2400 and over 3000 respectively. Now yes Cinebench is a synthetic benchmark however Cinebench tends to be a pretty good sort of test if you will of the performance that you're going to see in the real world from these CPUs remember no one's gaming on Threadripper chips people that are uh, editing videos for a living or doing 3d work graphic design that's where the market lies for these CPUs now then let's take a look at specs on paper Intel's R9 chip has 10 cores and 20 threads which sounds absolutely insane until you look at the AMD side. The $799 chip has 12 cores and 24 threads uh, and the higher end $999 CPU has a whopping 16 cores and 32 threads. It appears that there won't be any higher end Threadripper releases as a recent slide from one of AMD's presentations shows that Threadripper will be up to 16 cores and 32 threads. So unless they bring out a higher clock version of this highest end 1950X CPU, that seems very unlikely. Plus, I don't see how you can get much higher end performance without jumping over to their epic server lineup of CPUs. Clock speed wise, you're also seeing some very impressive numbers. At the lowest end 1920X CPU has a base of 3.5 gigahertz and a boost of 4 gigahertz, and the higher end 1950X has a base of 3.4 gigahertz and a boost of 4 gigahertz. Now these are really, really incredible numbers, especially for such high core count CPUs. You look at Intel Xeon Liner CPUs, the ones that have got 16 cores, 32 threads, you see much lower clock speeds in the 2, 2.8 gigahertz, 3 gigahertz, 3.2 gigahertz if you're really sort of pushing the boundary. Not to mention you've got any overclocking support here. You really are going to see some incredible clock speeds out of Threadripper. A couple of other things to mention, Threadripper does have a pretty high TDP at 180 watts compared to Ryzen 7's 95, but that doesn't mean that the chips are necessarily inefficient. It just means that they're incredibly powerful. You've got 12, 16 cores, you really are going to need a lot of power here. And if you look at the size of these CPUs, a lot of space to actually dissipate heat so I can't imagine the TDP should be too much of a complaint from people. There's a couple of leaks and rumours actually that have gone around uh, suggesting that AMD may actually include uh, liquid CPU coolers as stock coolers in the boxes for these Threadripper CPUs which I think would be a fantastic move and it wouldn't surprise me given that AMD have repeatedly increased the quality of the stock coolers that they've provided on the consumer end and also released graphics cards with inbuilt liquid coolers. PCI lanes is yet another incredibly astonishing spec around these uh, Threadripper CPUs that cannot be ignored. With 60 PCI lanes on the chip and up to 64 PCI lanes with the chipset compared to Ryzen 7's maximum uh, CPU and chipset lanes of 24, you're going to be able to plug in so many graphics cards to these things, maybe Bitcoin miners will finally be happy. On a serious note that these CPUs do look incredible. The final thing I wanted to note is that we've actually seen Threadripper motherboards around now for quite some time. A couple of months back we saw them at Computex as well, seen a couple from Asus uh, come out the woodwork as well and it's a really really good test when you're seeing these motherboards for this yet unreleased CPU architecture already out in the wild, already being made and tested by motherboard manufacturers. That X299 release 
was so rushed that many motherboard vendors didn't even have time to get certain certifications such as USB-C 3.1 Thunderbolt. It doesn't seem like this is at all going to be the case here and it definitely looks like AMD has sort of bagged up all of their best cards and just is playing them all at once. It seems AMD here is giving you no other option than to go for their CPUs at this price point and how Intel will react is certainly going to be incredibly interesting. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do, smash that like button and do subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at GeekWatt for behind the scenes look, shenanigans, all that sort of stuff. Got a couple of giveaways coming soon as well. So if you haven't already hit that like button, do it now. And we'll see you in the next GeekWatt video.